in the last lecture we talked of vectors and scalars you know these are the two kinds of quantities we come across in physics scalars as i told you have only magnitude vectors on the other hand have both magnitude as well as direction and i also told you that two vectors are equal if they are parallel and they have the same magnitude and i also emphasized that vector is a very important concept and therefore you must learn the the this concept well to be able to understand physics now and even later in this lecture we'll deal with addition of vectors you know vectors how to add vectors but before that a word of caution only vectors of the same kind can be added for example two forces can be added two velocities can be added but a force and velocity cannot be added that means the vectors to be added must have the same kind now suppose a and b are two vectors to be added you can see vector b here and vector a here don't be surprised that i am asking you to add two vectors which are not joined they are at different places you will come across in in physics many times that vectors are are not in the same place in the same at the same point and yet you are required to add them so here i have taken the example of adding a vector a to vector b recall that the arrow is called the tip or the head of the vector and the other side is called the tail of the vector so when i want to add two vectors i place the tail of the one vector at the head of the other vector let's take i i'll show you this with the a simple manipulation this is vector a you can recognize it it is parallel to a that i have shown and it has the same magnitude so it is vector a i want to add vector b to it so what do i do i place the tail of the vector b at the tip of the vector a here and now i draw a line or a vector between the tail of vector a and the tip of vector b see this is called the sum of two vectors a plus b you can add b to a and you can show vector a plus b is equal to vector b plus a that means vector addition is commutative the order does not matter whether you add a to b or whether you add b to a doesn't matter so vector addition is commutative in its property i can similarly add more than two vectors i have taken here three vectors a b and c and now i'll show you how i am going to add a b and c look at this this is vector b i have taken b first i told you in the last slide that doesn't matter whether you take b first or a first so i take b and then i take c notice that the tail of c is at the tip of b and now i draw a vector from the tail of b to the tip of c here that is vector b plus c and now i want to add a so let me draw vector a and i want to add b plus c to a so i have placed a the tail of a at the tip of b plus c and i now draw a vector from the tail of b plus c to the tip of a c this is the sum of three vectors a plus b plus c you can carry on this process by changing the order i added b plus c first you can add a plus b first and you will see that it makes no difference the end result here is the same the two vectors here they are the end vectors or the result of addition of three vectors they are they are equal they are parallel and they have the same magnitude therefore the vector addition is said to be associative that is a plus b plus c is equal to a plus b plus c the order does not matter you can extend the addition to four vectors i have shown here you see 
I have added A to B to get A plus B and then I have added C to get A plus B plus C. Then I have added D to A plus B plus C to get the vector A plus B plus C plus D. As I have said earlier, order does not matter. You can do A in many different ways, but the end result would always be the same. Recall that in mathematics, subtraction of one number from the other, say 5 from 6, is actually the addition of minus 5 to 6. Similarly, here when I want to subtract vector b from a, I add minus b to a. You see, let me repeat subtraction of two vectors is actually the addition of one and the negative of the other. So, let us see how we get the result. So, we follow the procedure of addition of two vectors because subtraction is nothing but addition. So, we draw vectors, we two take vectors a and b as before and I want to subtract b from a. That means, I want to add minus b to a. Is this clear? That I add minus b to a. That means, I am subtracting b from a. So, let me start the process. Here, you take vector a and vector b is already drawn. So, now I will take vector minus b. How do I get vector minus b? I draw a vector in the opposite direction and which has the same magnitude. So, I will draw vector minus b and now I add a to minus b. That means, I draw the vector from the tail of a to the tip of minus b. Here it is. So, that is the subtraction of vectors. Subtraction of vectors is equivalent to addition with one vector carrying a negative sign. So, subtraction of b from a is addition of minus b to a and we follow the procedure of addition. Let me repeat this once again. We have two vectors a and b. I want to subtract b from a. That means, I want to add minus b to a. So, I shall draw a. I shall draw minus b and then add a and minus b. Here it is. So, a minus b is actually equal to a plus minus b and you can see in this case the a minus b is not equal to b minus a as in, in addition we had a plus b equal to b plus a in, in subtraction we do not have a minus b equal to b minus a. Now, addition of two vectors can be done by a law which is called parallelogram of vector addition and the addition of two vectors or the sum of two vectors is say vector a and b a plus b is called the resultant of a and b. Let us see how we can find the resultant. Here I have got vector a, I have got vector b and I added a to b to get this vector a plus b represented by a green line. Do you realize that it is actually the diagonal of a parallelogram which has sides a and b vectors a and b. You can see I draw a here, I draw b here and this becomes a parallelogram and this vector a plus b or the resultant of a and b is the diagonal of the parallelogram. That is why it is called the parallelogram law of addition of vectors. Let a and b be two vectors and theta be the angle between them shown here. You see this is a, this is b and this angle theta is the angle between them. Then make a parallelogram as shown here. So, I will draw a side parallel to b and a side parallel to a and complete the parallelogram. So, we have a here, a here, b here and b here. And now with a little bit of 
geometry we shall be able to show that the magnitude of the resultant is the square root of a square plus b square plus 2 a b times cos theta and tan alpha alpha gives the direction of the resultant tan alpha is equal to b sin theta by a plus b cos theta. If you know a little bit of trigonometry you can do it easily. Let me repeat that again that we have vector b here vector a here we complete the parallelogram we find the resultant a plus b drop a perpendicular from r on the base that is p q extend it to t this angle is theta because it is uh, corresponding angle and this angle is alpha of course and now a little bit of uh, trigonometry would show that r square is equal to a square plus b square plus 2 a b cos theta. The magnitude of the vector r that is the resultant is a square plus b square plus 2 a b cos theta square root of that. So, let me repeat this parallelogram law of addition of vectors. We have vector a then we have vector b we complete the parallelogram by drawing the vector b here and vector a there on the top and then the vector from p to r is the resultant or the sum of vectors a and b and then to complete this construction we draw a perpendicular from r onto the base r t and extend p q to t and now we can make simple calculation it is not difficult and you will get the magnitude of the vector r equal to a square plus b square plus 2 a b cos theta a simple trigonometry would give you this result and the direction of the resultant that is angle alpha is given by tan alpha equal to r t by p q plus q t it is b sin theta divided by a plus b cos theta. Remember that here a and b are the magnitudes of the vectors a and b and the earlier result where we get the magnitude of the resultant again a and b under the under root sign they are magnitudes of the vectors a and b. There are some special cases of this uh, result you can see easily what would happen if the two vectors are parallel since the angle between them is 0 their cos theta would be 1 and we will have a square plus b square plus 2 a b under root which is nothing but a plus b. So, the when two vectors are parallel then the sum of their these two vectors is just the vector which has magnitude equal to a plus b and the direction is the same here when two vectors are parallel the angle between them is 0 use the expression for the magnitude and the direction of the resultant you know the formulae which I showed you earlier these magnitude of the resultant and the direction of the of the resultant and use these formulae and you will see that the magnitude of the resultant is equal to the sum of the two resultants and alpha is 0 that means the resultant is in the same direction as the two vectors as shown here you have vectors a and b when you add them then the sum has a magnitude which is equal to the sum of magnitudes a and b. So, when vectors are parallel you get the result that the resultant vector is equal to the sum of two vectors. Now, if the two vectors are anti parallel then what happens if you go back to the result of parallel vectors you can guess what is going to happen if the two vectors are equal in magnitude and they are in the anti parallel directions then the result is going to be a vector whose magnitude is 0 is called a null vector. So, if the vectors are anti parallel the magnitude of the resultant is the difference of the two magnitudes and if the two magnitudes are equal then the difference is 0 and the direction is the same as that of the vector of larger magnitude. If the two vectors are different in magnitude then the result that you get would be a vector which whose magnitude will be the difference of the two vectors magnitudes of two vectors and the direction of the vector which has a larger magnitude. Here we have got two vectors a and b and you know a is larger than b in magnitude. So, I am going to subtract b from a let us see how we do it. 
on this side a vector a and you see this is vector b and the difference is vector a minus vector b and the direction of the difference vector is the same as that of vector a the direction is the same as that of vector with larger magnitude and let me repeat if the two have the same magnitude then their resultant is a null vector a vector having zero magnitude if the two vectors a and b are perpendicular then again simple geometry would tell you that the magnitude of the resultant vector is the square root of a squared plus b square where a and b are the magnitudes of vectors a and b and the direction is along the diagonal of the rectangle with the two vectors as sides as shown here vector a vector b and the resultant is the diagonal of the rectangle which we made with vectors a and vector b in the next lecture we shall take the multiplication of vectors multiplication of a vector by a scalar multiplication of a vector by another vector and then we shall also see in the later lectures how a vector can be resolved into its components along a given axis set of axes and then we will introduce unit vectors